you can't what they call rest on your laurels. You can't say, you know, we did Moderna, therefore we're going to do X, Y, Z. You keep having to relearn, re-earn your reputation. And that's a great thing in my view because it keeps you sharp, competitive, creative, and humble. Lubal Afian is an Armenian scientist and entrepreneur. He was born in Lebanon and later moved to Canada and the United States. Mr. Afian is best known for co-founding the biotech company Moderna through his venture capital firm Flagship Pioneering. Moderna became a household name during the COVID-19 pandemic when it was one of the first to come up with a vaccine. I'm Sumiko Tan, executive editor of The Straits Times. I'm meeting the businessman at W. Sentosa. Over breakfast, Mr. Afian talks about how being an immigrant has shaped him. He also recounts the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic and the pressure and excitement coming up with Moderna's vaccine. Could you explain you know, how your immigrant background has influenced your work? My experience is that when you immigrate, you go from some place where you're familiar and accepted to a place where it's totally foreign and you're feeling exposed and uncomfortable and you have to prove yourself, you have to adapt. You take nothing for granted. You kind of really work hard. On the other hand, you are all of a sudden creating unusual value uh, because you can bring new perspectives, new cultures, new mindsets. And then what's happened in our case is we've kept immigrating. So the reason we use the word pioneering is that if you're pioneering, you're perpetually immigrating. And that has become our company's life story. You can't, what they call, rest on your laurels. You can't say, you know, we did Moderna, therefore we're going to do X, Y, Z. You keep having to relearn, re-earn your reputation. And that's a great thing in my view because it keeps you sharp, competitive, creative, and humble. What were the COVID years like for you? It started suddenly, very early in 2020, we learned about this report of a virus in China that was having flu-like symptoms that seemed serious, but we didn't know what it was. We were asked by World Health Organization whether our technology could apply to coming up with a vaccine. And we decided to work on this quite speculatively because it was not called a pandemic. We didn't know exactly what we were going after. But we thought if we could go after it with this new technology, it could be a big uh, demonstration for us. And so we uh, jumped on. We were provided the sequence uh, from the Chinese scientists who posted it online. Within hours, we had the design of the RNA. The thing you have to keep in mind is that Moderna had previously worked on nine other vaccines against infectious diseases and put them into human trials already. It was not at all the first thing we worked on. And so that's the way it all started out. Middle of January, it started taking it by storm. All of February, we started uh, focusing on this. And by March, we were ready to go into human trials. So it was very quick, 44 days from the day we started to the day we injected the first vaccine in a human arm. Was there any period where you were you know, especially stressed out? I'm sure I was stressed out the whole time. There were many apprehensive moments. Some of it had to do with our dealings with the U.S. government because we realized we needed their involvement if we were going to do this. And there were some tense discussions. In March, the U.S. was shut down. And so everybody operated from home. The board couldn't meet. The management team wasn't together. Our research labs was operating 24 hours a day, but with great protections to their health. It's stressed, but it's also this feeling of you're in a battle. You have to win, people depending on you. So it's, it was as exciting as it was stressful. How long more will Moderna be developing boosters? As best we can tell now, the, the boosters will be needed on an annual basis, just like flu. So the seasonal flu vaccine has been around for a long time and people are still dying from influenza, but many people take it and they're well protected. And in fact, those vaccines are nowhere near as good as the vaccines, the boosters we're providing, but they're not called boosters anymore. They're just seasonal COVID vaccines because the time that you get protection is relatively limited, it's months, and for against serious infection and death. And so, you know, we'll see how it plays out, but for now, the expectation is that it'll be a seasonal vaccine. Flagship has like 48 companies. What drives you? I think the possibility, together with our colleagues, a rather large organization, to collectively imagine, create, develop, and grow companies that can have impact on the world, whether it's in human health, 
or the planet's health through agriculture and sustainability, how could that not motivate anybody? We're busy trying to show that you can leap to totally unknown places, figure out where value lies, and then connect that back to the reality today, and then try to get there. And if you can get there with the people, the financial resources, and the execution, then you've created an entirely new company that is productive and helping the planet. And that's what keeps me interested. Thanks very much for having Thank breakfast. Thank you. Thank you so much. The deepest, deepest mission I have, the calling I have inside, was to support breastfeeding mothers.